So the first one is exactly the one that we have mentioned. And then this is, don't, uh, don't worry. So I'm writing down something that is Latin or Greek. You don't need to memorize it. Just to, just to make sure that you understand why this is correct. And then apply it. And, and this is good. So the first one is called modus ponens. <coughs> Modus ponens means method. So modus roughly says it's a method of affirming. Affirming something to be correct, saying yes. So the form is P implies Q, and then P, and then you will have a conclusion Q. Is that OK? Modus ponens. We use it every day. So this is if it rains, I drive to school. OK. Now the second one has a similar name. It is called modus tollens. So what is modus tollens? So this one is the method of method of denying. So again, we have P implies Q known to be true, but this time I have not Q. So any conclusion? Any conclusion? So if I have uh, eaten the cake, my mouth will be dirty. Now look at it. My mouth is clean. So what does that mean? I didn't. OK. I'm not the one who eats the cake. I'm, I didn't. So this implies not P. This is things that we use every day. OK? Modus tonus, modus tonus. The next one is, we call it hypothetical. Just a name. Don't worry. It's just a name. Hypothetical syllogism. And then. So we know the premise is P implies Q, Q implies R. Mm. So, so like, uh, so if I have some money, I will buy a cake to eat, and then if I eat the cake, I will become fat. So. What does that mean? If I, so that means if I have some money, I will become fat. OK, good. <laughs> right? So this means you also know P implies R. OK? This is something that we use every day, right? If you do this, then you will do that. If you, then it's like our mom or our dad will say, OK, if you don't study, study hard here, you will fail the course. If you fail the course, oh, you will be very sad because I will be very sad or whatever. OK, so, so if you don't study well, I will be very sad. OK, so, so this is something that we use every day. And then this one, this one is disjunctive syllogism. Don't worry about the name. But, but when you see disjunctive, that means that you will see some or. Conjunctive, you will see some n. So here, let's see. So we have not p, p or q. Then what do we have? Let's see. OK. So either p or q will happen. And now we can rule out that p will not happen, not p. So what does that mean? q must happen, right? OK. q must happen. So because we need every, so we know that not P is true, so P is false. And then we need false or Q to be true. So it has to be the case that Q is true. Is that OK? So are there any examples? Are there any examples? OK. So for instance, uh, usually in, in, in the university here in Taiwan, there are two ways to get into uh, the graduate school. Either you you get enrolled uh, directly, just taking your uh, uh, year four uh, academic record results, or 
you can take an exam and then and then and then and then to apply, right? So if you are not applying it in one way, then you can enter a school will be in the other way, right? So okay, and then so all of them are super easy. The next one is addition. Okay, addition. You add one thing. So you have P. Then therefore, you have P or Q. And it makes sense, right? I already know that P is true. Then P or Q has to be true. OK. The next one is simplification. So this is like pretty much like the opposite of it, addition. Simply. <coughs> Vacation. Okay, simplifying things. So simplification is we know that there is p and q, so we can really just imply that p has to be true. When p and q are true, then p has to be true. Yeah. And then what do we have? Conjunction. Okay. So conjunction is about and. So this is also very simple. You have P, you have Q. You know that P is true. You know that Q is true. Then their conjunction has to be true. OK? Yeah, simple, simple, right? Now, the next one is pretty much, I don't know. This is not, nat not that natural, but it is used a lot in some um, AI research, artificial intelligence research, some rule-based artificial intelligence research. It's called resolution. So resolution, I write down here and see if you can get the same conclusion as we can get. So I know that P or Q is true. OK, I also know that not P or R is true. Is there some new thing? Not that trivial that we can conclude. Mm. If it rains, I drive to school. If it doesn't rain, I walk. So can we conclude anything? So if it rains, I drive to school. If it doesn't rain, I will walk to school. So, so what does that mean? So every day I will either drive to school or I will walk to school. Okay, it must be one of these cases. So, I don't know whether p, not p, whether this is true or whether this is true, but I will know that at least one of them has to be true. Is it? Is it okay? So this is some kind of a resolution. So, so this is actually. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm quite old already. I, there, there's a computer game you called Minesweeper. Have you played it? Cai Di Lei. Okay. So in Minesweeper, you, you will sometimes you have uh, some, some, something that you are not certain whether there is a mine here or not. But, but maybe if there is a mine here, then, then there is a mine here. Or, or if there's a mine here, there's a mine here, something like this. Or, or there's no mine here, then there's a, a, a mine here or a mine here, something like this. Then you use this kind of logic deduction to understand that, okay, to make certain conclusion that, oh, there has to be some, some bomb here or some bomb here. So we need to be careful not to, not to click here. Okay, I don't know where it is. Maybe there is a bomb here, I don't know. If there is a bomb here, then there is a bomb. There is no bomb here, there is a bomb, something like this. So I won't do this unless I'm very certain to, to click it. OK, so, so this is some, so somehow we, we, will, we will use, but not that very fre frequent. So we know that Q or R has to be true. So there is a, so call it universal instantiation. OK, universal relates to for all, because you check for all. So it is like you are given a premise for all x, px. This is what we, we know, OK? 
But then, once we know that this is true, that means that for any particular specific x that you look at, then this px will be true. So this is, you can conclude that p of any x, any x, x0, let's say, has to be true. This x0 means a specific x we, we plug in. Does that make sense? OK, good. And then the other way. So we call it instantiation because we look at a particular example, instance, instance, for instance, for example. So we look at a particular instance of this universal argument, and we know that we can conclude something. And then the re opposite of this one is the universal generalization. We try to generalize things. So for universal generalization, then we know that, let's say PC is true for any C. So for any possible C that you can consider, PC is true. Then this is exactly having the same meaning as we can write down for all x, PX. Is that OK? So things are super easy, right? Then there are 11 and 12. They are talking about existential. So we have existential in instantiation, and we have existential generalization. So existential instantiation is like, suppose that I have there exists x, p x. Then I can conclude that for some <coughs> particular x0, we will have px0. Because it says that this is the same thing. If I tell you that there exists x, px is true, that means that I can find a certain x0. I don't know which x0 it is, but I know for sure that there is some x0. So let's call it x0. And then we will have px0 to be true. And similarly, if I know that for some x0, we have p x0, then we can really conclude that this is also true. There exists x p x. This is the case. Is that OK? OK, so that's it. OK, so there are two more minutes. OK, so I don't want to talk about new things. Instead, I want to talk, give you a, a new puzzle. OK, yeah. So this puzzle is like this. Uh, so first of all, there is a kick. Okay, there is a kick, and then you want to share it with your your brother, okay, and then and then you want to share it fairly so that everyone will be happy. But the kick may not look like that normal. Maybe there are some strawberries on this side, and there are no strawberry on this side. Maybe there is a pineapple here, maybe there is a Queen Elsa here, whatever. Okay, maybe there is Anna here. Okay, Anna. So you want to, to divide the cake fairly so that everyone will be happy. So you have a knife for cutting the cake. OK, so it's not for killing. <laughs> so is there a way that both of, the, both of us will be happy? Is there a way that we can share? So of course, you can find our mother. OK, so my brother, my brother and I are sharing this cake. Maybe I can find my mother to cut the cake, right? Well, my mother may not be that, that good. OK, maybe my mother cuts the cake like this. And then we both think that, OK, Anna is very important. So we, we like this part. So we are both unhappy if the other person chooses this one, right? So for two persons, is there a way to, to do so, so that everyone will be happy? A anyone has tried? Has a brother at home or a sister at home? Yeah. OK, that feel? <laughs> OK, so you, ha you must have encountered su such a scenario before, right? So you have a Coke, and then there are cups. Then you want to share. So what should you do? One of us will pour the Coke in. So one of us do the, sh divide, div the, the cutting, and the other one picks first. Is that OK? So everyone will be happy. Assuming that, OK, after cutting, the total sum will still be half and half. I mean, will still be adding up to, to, to the original value, OK? OK? Does that make sense? So you have a cake, and then there are two persons. So one takes the knife to cut, 
and then the other one picks first. OK? Now, I want to ask, how about three persons? Is, is, is it possible that for three persons, everyone will be happy? So what is meant by happy? So, so first of all, we may assume that the cake has a value of 1 in total. As long as I can get 1 third, I will be happy. 1 third or more than 1 third, I will be happy. OK, this is my guarantee. I don't care about the other two. So I just need to get 1 third or more. Is there a way? So I will tell you first one way, but it may not be correct. So for, for instance, I may ask the first one to cut. So A cuts, and then, and then the, the cutting into one third and then two third. Uh, let's say we ask A to cut two, two. Okay, cut, cut, okay. And then B choose first, and then C choose next, and then A choose last. Okay, does that work? Does that work? So A is going to do the cutting into one third and one third according to A's thinking. And then B is going to cut, uh, choose first, and then C is going to ch choose next. So f will, will anyone here be unhappy? C, very good. C will be unhappy because A and B, they can, they can, they can join together. So A is doing something like, so the cake is here. So my cutting is chop, chop. So the cake is here, I chop, chop. So the cake is still here. So B takes first, right? So B takes everything. And then you are C, you are left with nothing. And then you are, OK, because of your position, then, then you have no say. And then you are very, very sad. OK. So this is the challenge. Let's talk about this on Wednesday. OK, so this is version one. So is there a way, in general, so that we can share a cake among three persons? Everyone will be happy. Happy in the sense that everyone gets one third or more. Now. I will tell you that this is OK. This can be done. What is more challenging? OK, more challenging is that usually we don't care whether we get one third or, or what. We care whether we get the largest piece, right? usually. So is there a way that we can share a cake between three persons so that I will think that my part, the, one, the, the, the cakes that I get, has to be at least larger than or equal to the other one? So I get the largest share. OK, so I won't be jealous of the others. I won't envy. So this is called envy free, free of envy. I, I, I won't be jealous. I don't care about the others because I get the largest piece. So let's talk about this on Wednesday. OK, that's it. OK, thank you.